Hi traders, this is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the Tuesday, the 19th of Feb. All right, now as we come through Monday, as you usually get on Mondays, you get a few little uh, left field moves, like just little tiny bumps. Uh, Aussie poked to the top side, but then just fell. As I was saying yesterday, the Aussie is a bit more neutral to dovish than the Kiwi. The Kiwi did manage to pop above 68.40, but now he's sort of retreating. Right, These are just like fickle little moves that traders are feeling out you know, the top side of the market. Uh, Dolly N, as you can see, we hit that new trend line where, where it was adjusted. It's now sort of gliding along it. Uh, trade is not really willing to really buy it or sell it at this point. So it's just sort of cruising to the top side. Euro, um, you know, had a hinting suspicion you might get a few stops tweaked above sort of 113, sort of 20. That's exactly what's happened. And uh, now what we've got is Euro has been sort of, I know it's already down at one sort of 13, but it's, it's been diffused. Momentum is lost. It's now trading sideways. Um, Sterling, well, downtrend was in play. It's now come up to challenge this trend line. And as you can see, it's stalled right at the level in that barroom brawl section there. It's, you know, no one wants to buy it. Do they sell it? You know, the, the news in Brexit is actually quite weird because I'll show you the news in a minute. Um, they're saying the Sterling Rose is Brexit divisions deepen. Now, that sort of news previously would send it down 200 points. So they're saying it rallied on that. that that's just stupid. But um, one, one of the key things here, I just had a look at the charts. You look at Dollar Cab, which sort of just drifted down through the trend line, now trading sideways, and then has a 100 point blip to the top side. Now, I went sort of fishing to find out what was going on. It looked like um, uh, there's some sort of like political issues, guess, going on in the background in uh, Canada. One of Trudeau's ministers, uh, the secretary there, throwing himself under the bus. Looks like it could build into a, a bit of a storm. But I'd say that whole move is based on very little liquidity. As I said, Monday, US holiday, um, it's just spiked higher. That would be probably some crazy algo with no liquidity in the market, taking it up 100 points and it's straight back down again. Um, that'll be a bit of a shock to the system for those traders who are trying to, you know, make some money on a Monday when Monday's on a US holiday, there's nothing to be, nothing to be made. Okay. So you come over to, um, just look at the dollar index. Actually, this could be a bit of the news here. So just looking at the major news now, Mondays, okay, there's been no major announcements over the weekend. The new services will rehash a whole heap of mumbo jumbo. This is this Brexit uh, article here. Pound rises and Brexit divisions deeper now. That's completely different to what has happened over the last two years. Um, now, there's Brexit up here once again. There's, there's a little bit of uh, craziness happening. Seven lawmakers quit the UK Labor Party. Um, this is getting messier and messier day by day. I don't think the, uh, the politicians are looking at what the uh, Queen had to say a few weeks back now. Just with that CAD, right, you can go fishing for the data. Like, go to a national regional, go to Canada, and you're trying to find out what's going on, right? So you just change the news to the location and, and, and find it. Now, this is the only real news I can see. Canada's PM Chief Secretary resigns amid SNC controversy. controversy. Now, this has the potential to blow up in Trudeau's face. Uh, at this point, I'd say the big move is the liquidity issue, but this is probably a potential ongoing uh, drama that could... Um, impact Trudeau's uh, election campaign that's coming up. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Um, China's wine climbs as trade talks momentum. Like this, this China, US Chinese trade issue is just a joke. I mean, every couple of days it turns from trade optimism to trade um, pessimism and it's just ridiculous. So you come back and just, just focus on what's happening with the currency pairs themselves and mainly the dollar index and the dollar one, right? You can start to see where, what's, what's happening. So with the dollar index, it's cruised higher. It's now just trading sideways. Now this isn't falling, okay? It's just trading sideways. It's, lack, it's lacking momentum. Uh, traders have found a, a reason not to buy it, okay? And they're not really selling it either. So it's not really going anywhere. And that's the same for uh, the offshore one, the dollar one. It's now sort of trading sideways as well. US holiday, equity markets uh, not open. So there's nothing much there. I wouldn't expect too much out of the, um, Asian equity markets, unless there's some uh, fresh US China news or some other um, crap out there as well. Now, coming into the day ahead, there's only sort of really two major things that you need to keep abreast of. And this is going to be a bit of a tricky one. We've got the claim account change, the employment numbers out of the UK. Uh, they are a huge, high impacting release, right? So just be careful. There's three or four variables there that are coming out. 
The average weekly earnings has been the focus of the Bank of England. Now, think of the, the setup we've got. UK retail sales Friday, massive numbers, sterling rallies. Now, this is another major piece of the economic fundamental puzzle. So keep an eye on this. This has the potential to throw it down 50 to 100 or even send it higher. Um, I am sort of taking out the Brexit impact, but this is a really, really hard number. It will drive the market if there's significant variance, either up or down. Right, so just keep an eye on that. Now, as far as Euro goes, I think the, um, the if you're looking for a, a more placid opportunity, the Eurozone, uh, oh, sorry, the German zoo economic numbers, historically a really important number, okay, and can move Euro around. It used to move the uh, Deutsche Mark around in the, in the 90s before Euro came about. And it's a, it's, it gives you a bit of sentiment over what's happening in Germany, and, and that generally reflects the sentiment in the, in the Eurozone. So I'll be watching that very closely for a potential variance there, excuse me, uh, that may give us a, a lead into an opportunity there on uh, the Euro. And that's pretty much it. There's no, nothing else out for that day. So the European session is pretty much the major one. When you come into the um, North American session, you're really looking at uh, the geopolitical situations. Trump's trying to build a wall uh, around Mexico. Um, there's the US-China trade issues, and there's always a few other things simmering away. So just looking at the upcoming events, as you can see, the, uh, the major releases for today, uh, these two puppies here, as I just went through, is UK employment numbers and the zoo data. Now, market conditions, the market conditions aren't bad, but what we have a situation is, they're just drifting sideways. And that's a real, you know, it's harder, okay? This trading is harder when there's no specific direction. I know a lot of traders are out there sort of trying to make odds and ends. They've got a day off, they think it's a day to trade. When you've got a situation where all the majors are trading sideways, the only way they're gonna move is on random events, right? Which you cannot predict when they're gonna come out or even what the impact is gonna be. So when they're like this, you know what? I'm sort of sitting back and waiting. I'm waiting for clear direction. Where's the direction coming from? Well, it's obviously gonna come from potential upcoming releases, and this is where we can see the uh, impact. Actually, the Aussie RBA minutes should be up the top here. So just keep an eye on the Aussie RBA minutes. I actually forgot about those. So the Aussie could come into play. The, uh, definitely the European session is gonna be the major one, and uh, with the core market drivers being geopolitical events, it's gonna be a tricky one for sure. All right, so I'm not going to be uh, holding my breath for anything special. I definitely will be watching the uh, UK employment numbers and the German zoo numbers. Um, there's lots of opportunities coming out. This is only like started trading in Asia on Tuesday, right? There's lots of opportunities coming up. So make sure you have a, uh, a look at what fits in and uh, what makes sense to you. That's the most important thing. If you have any questions, traders, if you, uh, you've got any things you want to see or look at, don't forget you've got the 247 trade zone here. It's uh, really filling out and uh, becoming a great resource for, uh, for everyone. All right, that's it for me, guys. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the uh, 247 Trade Zone. Cheerio.